were kind of making history? Um, I think everything, they got to a certain point in after Morning Glory come out and Wonderwall took off, that it, it felt that everything was leading up to something that was going to define uh, not only the size of, of the band, but what British pop music was about at that time. So it, it all felt like it was leading to Nebworth. But, you know, we were too busy... I think we were too busy doing it to worry about... Because I thought... I think if we'd have... If we'd have sat down and calculated that we were going to make history, we'd have, you know, we'd have... I'd have certainly wore a better outfit, let's put it that way. And I may have gone to bed a little bit earlier. And we may have tried to keep Liam off the sauce. This one's for our... Yeah, this one's for our anyone. Biggest freestanding gig in mm. history. Very proud of that. What do you remember of that time? Nothing. Not a lot, really. I remember forgetting that it was like I thought we were only doing one night, and then we'd done the second, so I got really drunk after the first night. I can't remember anything else. Today's gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you're not to do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. What are the characteristics that make a great rock band? Having it, just having it. I don't know what it is, you just gotta have it, and I've got it. And by us having it, hopefully some other people will learn how to love it. You know what I mean? Enjoy the celebrity. At the beginning, of course, yeah. I loved all that at the beginning, meeting people you'd only seen on telly. And, um, you know, supermodels and all that stuff and actors and all that. Yeah, you know, meeting you and McGregor and all that for the first time was fucking ace. Oh. Oh. Danny Ball did a very clever thing and he sort of brought all the kind of Britpop luminaries and whoever in and asked them all to do songs for it and we just kind of did it and it was, uh, it was, it was cool, it was good fun. <laughs> the whole wave of creativity that came off the streets and surprised people you know, they were making Hollywood movies about tales of smack addiction in tenements in Glasgow. What was all that about? Oh, I had a fucking great time. And um, every single day between 1994, spring 94 and spring 97, there was something of ex there was some excitement. I really, we used to row at Loaded about whose turn it was to do the hundred yards to go and get the champagne. I used to really enjoy going out and like going to openings and then you know going out and getting, being, being in a suit one minute and then on your knees the next look like a fucking tramp and being surrounded constantly having people going oh he's lost it oh no he's looking really together oh no he's lost it. And in a way that, I don't know, I mean, there's a lot of enjoyment out of something like that. For a while, we all had a lot of fun. I certainly did. There was a kind of cultural change. It was all right to be a, a lad. Yeah, but it's like, <clears throat> I think it's like anything like that. Because it had been so beyond the pale to be like that for a long time, it was kind of a breath of fresh air when people just were quite crude. Yeah 
One of the odder things about this whole twinning of Britpop with lad culture um, is the fact that um, people were scared to talk about what it actually is that makes a rock star. An example of this is Liam Gallagher, who at various points looked quite androgynous. What does that mean? That you have a feminine quality about you as well. I have a what? Feminine quality about you. What does that mean? Well, you're not just some, you know... I'm a bird. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you're a bird. What does that mean? Well, it's like you're not, you know, some 15 stone hole. No. You, know, you, have, <laughs> you have that kind of androgynous. It's a kind of, you've got, you've got a bit of feminine in your masculinity. Have I? Explain. How does that mean? Well, I suppose just in your looks. I'm a pretty boy, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good looking. I take care of my hair. Bit obsessed with my hair. It's got to be, you've got to have a decent haircut if you're the front man of a band, you know what I mean? Hey, man. A lot of the people were very ambivalent about being in Vanity Fair in connection with Cool Britannia. Yet on the other hand, they kind of did want to be in Vanity Fair. It was as though if something hasn't been noticed by the American media, particularly New York glossy magazines, it's as though it hasn't really happened. So even though Cool Britannia was this kind of, was this sort of violent reaction um, to things precisely like Vanity Fair and their enormous influence, saying, we don't care what you think, we're British, we don't care about America, but at the same time, they wanted to be, they wanted to be photographed, they wanted to appear in the magazine. Well, one of the, one of the touch and go people uh, for a very long time was Tony Blair. Uh, one of my jobs was trying to persuade people in Tony Blair's office uh, that it would be a good thing politically for Tony Blair to pose in the Vanity Fair Cool Britannia issue. And um, that was extremely tough because on the one hand, the whole cultural phenomenon had occurred under John Major's premiership. So in a sense, the Tories could take credit for Cool Britannia. So why should Tony Blair in any way endorse it? Um, but on the other hand, Cool Britannia did seem to be a harbinger of a kind of new mood in Britain, a new optimism. And that was very much something Tony Blair hoped to sort of uh, catch the coattails of in the 97 general election. like an absolute fucking idiot and because uh, they wanted me and Liam to do it and I remember taking the phone call and somebody saying well if you don't do it Blair will do it to which I laughed and handed the phone to Liam and I was like oh well fuck oh well I'd better do it then you know what I mean and uh, yeah and Liam ends up on the cover with a nipple on his head looking like a fucking baby's bottle with his fucking missus in a Union Jack bed that's the one topless ooh um, rubbish. <laughs>